start putting the engine back together and I'm gonna put the heads on uh, first thing obviously is the head gasket you wouldn't want to have problems with those right Subaru so you get the good stuff these are Cometic MLS head gaskets the EG33 by the way is not known for having uh, catastrophic head gasket failure but uh, you can never be too careful so I actually went with the point 075 inch. Uh, I know the heads have been decked, so making up for a little bit. Um, I think the factory ones are 0 .066, so these are a little bit thicker. And if we're lucky, we'll get a slight reduction in compression, but that's not really why I got the thicker ones, mostly because of the heads being decked and because they make them. So why not? So we're going to put these guys on the engine and bolt the heads down. Right, that is the torque procedure done. Damn, that is nerve-wracking. Uh, mostly because you got your big breaker bar on there and it says, you know, tighten all the 20 foot-pounds and then tighten just these center ones by 90 degrees. And you're thinking, okay, yep, it's getting pretty tight. 90 degrees, big-ass breaker bar. Then you tighten the outside to 33 foot-pounds. And that's not bad. Then you have to go back and tighten them all again by 80 to 90 degrees. At that point, you're really wrenching on the thing. And you're just praying that something's not going to go pop. <sighs> so that was me actually stripping out my short block and the threads, the aluminum threads came out when I did that and the way that you repair that uh, which I've obviously had to do when I was back when I was building this engine originally is you get a time cert kit to you actually drill out the hole a little bit bigger and you thread in the time cert and then your head bolt will screw into the time cert. Luckily this time everything went good like I said once before the worst case scenario has happened to me so I will always have that fear and just another thing that I've learned that I don't think I'll ever forget.
do want to make sure you remove this screw from your helical cam gears so that way it's not just flopping around in the head. Got the heads on now, so we basically have a full long block over here. And all the gaskets are sitting there nice. A little bit more dirty than it was last time, but I suppose you'll have that from just regular use. But everything looked good. Uh, the heads looked just as good as they did when I got them back from the machine shop. Engine's only done about 2,000 miles or so since I actually built it. And when I say built, I mean assembled it. Uh, or as my friend Jordan likes to say, uh, took it apart, put dirt in it, and then reassembled it. But besides that, did the heads, polished the crank, new rings, new bearings, and maybe the head bolts are held on stronger with the time certs. I did all new head bolts uh, the last time I assembled it. Uh, and I've just reused them this time. I have reused them in the past even on a high mileage engine and did not have any problems. That was not a turbo application but I know they are torque to yield. Probably supposed to replace them but that's not happening. They are expensive and I'm gonna roll the dice. So next up uh, I've got to put the oil pan. I've uh, cleaned it up a bit. It's sitting right over here. I've got all the mating surfaces clean and I've cleaned all the grot out of there from all the RTV kind of spilling off in there. And if you haven't seen it, there's my oil return. It's a 10 a.m. fitting, bulkhead fitting on there. I installed that pretty early on in the process of turbocharging it. So we'll get the oil pan on and then possibly start putting the timing and stuff on the front of this thing and getting it more back together so soon we can be making boosts once again. with these chromatic head gaskets. Check this out. So if you're putting on the timing belt cover, this is the back of the timing belt cover. You can see it's not quite seated right there yet. And it's gonna run directly into that. So either I have to cut that off, which I don't wanna do, or I have to clearance this and hope that it does not hit anything on the other side. So a little bit annoying, but not anything we can't work around. assembling the engine. After I assembled the full long block, I've now put the coolant cross tube on and the lower intake with the injectors. My phenolic spacers are right underneath of that 
And then I've got the modified intake manifold on. Obviously modified because the throttle body is on this side. You can see the welds there where it was welded back together. Obviously my intake air temperature sensor. Cool and cross tube on there. My one-way valve. I think I might uh, cut this about right here and flop that the other way. See if I can't fit it in there because that would be quite a bit cleaner, but it's actually really easy to access right here, which is nice. Throttle bodies, probably a little bit better for you to see the idle air control valve. That's how much clearance we have there, so enough. My Hall Effect crank sensor. Oil, oil pressure switch, which you saw me install. And that's pretty much that, so. Now that we've got this um, mostly reassembled, we will get to putting it back in the car.